Welcome to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler being converted into an expedition boat. Today we're working on the crash bulkhead. This is an area of the boat that's beneath the anchor room and in front of the forward fuel tanks. We back up the front of the boat, it's stinking hot. So we've got tarpaulins galore going on, shade cloth, and the sandblaster is working over the back. It's incredibly loud up here, but luckily we've got something louder. We're going to start bashing the paint off inside this um, anchor room with our electric hammer drill. Alright, let me show you what we're doing. Okay, this is the very bottom of our anchor room. So, you can see that piece of pipe there, that's the drain from our shelf. So our anchor chain sits over the back here, just some rope and stuff sitting at the moment. But the anchor chain sits in there, and drains out there above the waterline. And where this little pinhole you can see in that corner, that's below the waterline. So we need to chip off this red paint, which is a red lead based paint. You can sort of see there's a bit of rust coming up there as well. We'll blast that at the same time and fix all of that. Um, but basically what the story is, we need to essentially chop that out, that, that rust. Now it goes below the floor. So if I scratch, there's a lot of sand here. You see there's a, see there's a weld line all the way along there. That's a previous cut that I've put into this floor and check this under the floor here. And I didn't see the rust over on the very top corner there. It was my mistake, I should have basically looked harder. Basically what we need to do is cut that out in the corner so I can use that as a drain hole. I'm then gonna hose out all of this sand and then we're gonna chop this floor out so we can climb inside the uh, crash bulkhead front end of the boat. But Damien, what's a crash bulkhead? I hear you ask. Well, it's funny you should ask that, I'll show you. So here we have the front half of the good ship Brewpeg. So if you imagine we're steaming through the water and we go and smack into something really hard, quite fast, say it's a reef or it could be a stonking great piece of ice, more than likely it's going to be something made of rock. This front end of the boat is theoretically going to get peeled open. So sort of anywhere in here can basically be opened up and then, uh, yeah, if we didn't have a crash bulkhead, water would start pouring in and the boat would potentially sink. However, crash bulkhead is basically a sealed air tank so it goes from just below that waterline there, so about a foot below the waterline, and it goes right the way down to the bottom, where you can see those rust dribbles coming down. That's the back of the bulkhead. So that front end bottom corner of the boat is essentially a sealed off air tank, and if it gets ruptured, if we hit something hard enough to open up the hull, that will flood with water, but it will only flood that, that compartment. It won't go any further back. Now, if we hit something hard enough to open that up and the next compartment, the next compartment is fuel. So you've got one on either side. It's divided in the middle down the centre line and then you've got a tank on this side and a tank on the far side. So we can rupture those and the boat still won't sink because it's, it's essentially a tank full of liquid anyway. We're just swapping it for diesel to seawater. It's not great for the environment but the boat still stays alive. If we rupture that, we move back to the cofferdam which is this little square you can sort of see down the bottom there. So that's um, half metre wide and it uh, goes right up to the deck, so it's about maybe three metres tall, just, just above the waterline there, about two feet above the waterline, and then right the way down to the keel. That's another tank, so if it ruptures, that, that again arrests any water going forward. If we hit something harder again, you can see you've got this final white square here. That's a water tank, so you've got one on either side, and that's about a metre wide, and it goes right from the bottom of the boat up to the deck, so about two feet above the waterline there. So that's, that whole front end of the boat is from, basically from everything you can see in the screen there is able to be ruptured and Brewpeg won't sink. It's impossible for it to sink because we're not changing the buoyancy of the boat at all because we are simply swapping from one liquid to another if we start filling them up with seawater. That's safe, that's awesome. Great, eh? It's only 10 degrees warmer in here than it is out there. Yeah, it feels quite good. <laughs> that, that was sarcasm. What? That was sarcasm. Oh, is it? Oh, do I need a little sarcasm sign? You do. <laughs> James just um, flew back this morning from Brisbane. He was in Sydney for a work function. We got stuck. And the flight crew got cancelled because of thunderstorm. He got stuck overnight, so he just arrived back this morning and stayed into work. <laughs> Walked in the door. Um, work pants off, boat pants on, <laughs> straight into work. Yeah, try. Yeah. Becky? Yeah. <laughs> 
full, so I'll give it a wash out. Get rid of the rubbish. Lovely. So now that we've gone through and given it a clean, you can sort of see where I cut the last inspection hole. So it's basically stainless, so it's all welded up and what have you. There's no rust to expect, obviously, because stainless won't do that. But what we need to do, right down here in the corner, you see where we've basically bashed out a hole. So there was sort of rust and rubbish all the way along. It's not really that deep, it just looks bad and it's, and it's killed the paint. So I'm gonna go through and I'll sandblast all of this away. So you can sort of see right away up that seam. So sort of there's a few little spots that we need to do something with. They're not too dramatic, there's nothing nothing bad here. A little bit of sandblasting and that'll be resolved pretty easily. But back down in that corner, you can sort of see why we have to uh, tackle that because um, clearly there's a bit of a hole there and that's underneath the waterline. We quite often get comments when I start using the um, big hammer drill to take off paint and things. People saying use a needle gun, it'll take it off much faster. Absolutely won't. This is vulcanized rubber. Um, oh, sorry, chlorinated rubber. The um, the needle gun is like kind of trying to brush your teeth with a cotton bud. It's just not even remotely going to touch this stuff. Um, the hammer drill is pretty much the only thing that takes this stuff off at any decent speed. Maybe half past two. A little drunk with armor. Can I see the number seven number? The big one? Yeah, that's not it. That's just a something. Can you see the big come out? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. A bomb come out. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Ugh. Yeah, it's a bomb. It's a bomb. So this is what we ended up with, so we've basically given it a vacuum out, you sort of, we haven't done anything on this side, you can see that's the original, there's the original triangle we cut out a while back. You can see we're left with um, basically white metal, there's a couple of bits here that, this is stainless so there's a couple of bits of staining or something here that's not rust, that must be something else. And then this is our mild steel up here, you can see there's pitting and things, but nothing too dramatic, nothing that I'm worried about. Over this side. <laughs> clean away. Right, so you can see they've had a couple of goes at welding this, they've done a few lines down there. But again, no real, no real corrosion, I'm not too stressed about that. Um, right down here, it's, it gets worse in that corner, you can sort of see over that corner it disappears altogether, and you can see how thin it is. I'll block that light off. You can sort of see how thin it is right in that corner there. Very hard to camera with this light. And then yeah, down in here you can sort of see it's eaten right the way through in there, but we do have a panel on that side, so it's not the end of the world. Um, right, so my plan. I need to get in there and cut most of this out. I need to replace that side panel. So, what I'm gonna do, I need access to the tank that's basically underneath this floor. So there you go, you can kind of see the shape. It's a wee bit hard with that light in the corner, but I'm gonna cut across the back of the, like right down the middle of that weld at the back. Then I'm going to do radius corners like so, cutting fairly close to the sides, radius corner at the front, we're going to be going straight across another radius, and then all the way back down to that side there. So what that's going to give me, so if I come back and give you a bit of an aerial view of it, it gives me a much, much bigger area to work. You can see the physical size compared to the old hole. The old hole just physically wasn't big enough to easily get your head in there and work in there properly. 
this is going to allow me to climb right inside that tank. I actually realise now I need a, um, a couple of five inch uh, grinding cutting wheels. The one mil cutting discs. Oh yeah? Because I'll cut all the straights with that. Oh right. Yeah, because I'll get a straighter line. And then, um, and then I'll do the corners with the plasma. So, that is our floor. So we've cut basically a big chunk of the floor out. We'll wait for that, all the smells and gas and whatever to dissipate. And we'll climb in and we'll see what we're working with. Oh. What's it look like inside? No. Preliminary look, it looks fine. We're just gonna weld it back up. Fuck it, it's done. <laughs> Problem solved. So it's code for oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't nah. got we haven't had a good look yet. That's a good size hole. That's really good. Yeah, it's a big one, eh? Yeah, it's great. There's two cavities, is there? Yeah, there's a like a solid um, bulkhead between them. We only um There's two crash bulkheads. <laughs> I didn't realise that. <laughs> so that's we could peel the front bulk. open and still have half a crash bulkhead left. Wow, that's strong, isn't that's it? That's pretty cool, eh? What are the welds like between the holes they look, and their bulkheads? They look great. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like they've cool. obviously had a few goes at welding it and there's a couple of passes, but they're really good welds. Like really nice, solid, consistent welds. That's really good news, isn't it? The boat can the whole did something the whole, and it's gonna stand. The whole boat's like that though, eh? So what's that thing that there's another wee one at the front, isn't there? I'm not sure what you're looking at. <laughs> Oh, that's where that bloke's still been living. Way down that side there, so I'll just drop the light so you can sort of see it a bit better. But it's not actually that bad. Like it goes down. This is definitely the worst part right down there. So this is, if I come back, you can sort of see there's a rib, a vertical rib, and then that over on the side there is the side of the actual boat. And where the where they join, there's obviously a bit of moisture or whatever sort of sat. I don't I don't know, but there's no way. There's not. I mean, the moisture can roll down if there is any. But either way, basically that's. I know what's going on. So you can see there's a vertical rib and then there's a patch that's not painted. That patch that's not painted is a previous repair and the repair has failed. So the good news, we can just cut that out, put a new one in, do it properly, get a double continuous weld on it and then we're going to be awesome. We're going to be stronger than what they did and they were in survey so I'm pretty happy about that. So this is the front end. So Got a little bit of condensation running down from that front sort of cavity coming back But you can sort of see like it's all painted so there's no real major rust or anything like that There's a bit of crappy pitting and stuff underneath the paint on that side and then over this far side At the back same deal you've got a vertical rib with a bit of crappiness on that they haven't cleaned it up and painted it well so overall really not a big deal very very happy with the condition of that so we'll give it a good clean we'll two pack up the bits that we've done work on and then we'll throw the stainless floor back in stoked with that condition really happy with that yeah it's all surface eh yeah i didn't think anything down there was too dramatic i'm very curious about this front thing <laughs> yeah we'll rip into it today yeah Oh lovely. Well that is not that bad at all really. No. I suppose you never know until you dig into that side though. Yeah, but you can you get some indicators though, eh? like there's just not that much bubbling around it. What about this front cavity, Dame? You're gonna open that up and have a look for it. No. You're not? No. But how will we know what's in there? We just pretend it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It sounds hollow. Yeah, it is hollow. I'll probably just plasma a hole in there. 
I suppose the worst case scenario, this cavity would fill up with water as we're driving. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. It's not bad. We feel much better now we've had the engineer to have a look. <laughs> the boffy wife. Can you climb out? Thanks. Do we need to get the block and tackle? Oh, that step is a long way down, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So, day two of this crash bulkhead. We've got to figure out um, essentially how bad the rust is downstairs. So, we're going to go and smash out the rust with a jackhammer, clear that out, and then we're going to get in there with the sandblaster and see what sort of white metal we're left with. very back corner this is the bit that we we're worried about we've bashed off probably 90% of the rust and it's nowhere near as bad as we thought it was going to be um, we definitely need to get in there and sandblast and get it back to white metal to understand what we're working with but it looks a bit average but it's actually not that deep in most of the places it's actually on this side I've bashed off this side as well and and I actually think this side is slightly deeper I can't see that they've ever put a patch on this side but I can see that they put a patch on this side and that's why I think this one has more thickness than this one over here obviously is because at some point new steel. Right, however, if I get this camera to focus, if you have a look down the length of there, you can sort of see there's some surface rust and things down. I'm gonna put the camera right in, right down the very bottom. You can sort of see that's the condition of the steel. So yes, it's rusting, but it's not, it's not um, taking out too much thickness. So we'll do a thickness uh, check on a lot of this, but I actually think we're not too bad um, Down here on this side So let me just zoom out because this camera doesn't want to focus So down there you can sort of see that bubbling paint. That's what rust looks like when it's under paint So we bash that out. There's a bit just there. Don't quite know what's going on there a little square going on and then get rid of that there and you can sort of see we've got some opening up rust coming through the paint and stuff there so we'll bash all of that off so every area that we can find we'll, we'll rip down and then we'll sandblast back to white metal so we understand what we're working with up the front this is the very front of the boat so you can see the um, the 20 mil thick keel so this beam here is 20 mil thick steel that runs the length of the boat and right up and down the bow um, they've put in some expandable foam or some stuff. I don't know what that's about. I think, I oh know that's steel, that's pretty garbage. So what I'll probably do is actually just sandblast all of that foam out so I can see, because that steel there looks pretty shit. Um, yeah, and just understand what we're working with really. So we need to gain some working space around this rusty bit of rubbish that we need to repair. So you can see that there's that vertical, sort of right in the center of the screen there, um, that's welded onto the back bulkhead. What we're going to do is plasma that out. Um, it's not critical that that's there. We're pretty sure they put that in. There's no welds or anything. We thought maybe there's a join there, but there's nothing, like no, no welding joins or anything like that. The thought that we had is maybe they just put that there so that they can hold the actual stainless floor in. Um, that's all welded in, obviously, so it doesn't need to be there anymore for that. So we're going to plasma it out so we can actually access those corners and clean them up properly.
So, so that's our um, piece of steel taken off. So you can kind of see, see if I can drop the camera right in. There you go, so in that corner we've basically ripped it out and that means we can get the um, hammer drill right in there on both sides. I'll flip around on this side here. You can see that side there. There you go, get rid of the light, you can see it a bit better. So you can also see where that joint is, where they've put a patch in previously. So we'll deal with that. Get in there, give it a good bash with the hammer drill and then sandblast it, see what we're working with. Get it back to white metal and see how much thickness we've got left. And the plan was is to open it up and then put a plate all the way down, but now that we've got in there we think we're probably going to revise that plan and do a patch at the top and maybe pad well at the bottom. Um, yeah, so that's that's Do you don't think it's quite as big as you thought? No, I don't think it's any, I don't think it's as big as I thought, no. Or the kind of the plans evolving as we learn more mm. and more. So because there's so many areas that need to be take it cut out or um, banged back and repainted and yeah. busted, yeah. I think it's a much bigger job. Oh, it's, it's like four or five times bigger than I thought. And also redesigning the the anchor well itself. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean that's the weekend, so of yeah. the week as it is anyway. Well, it's a simple job now because we've cut the floor out. Mm. In order to do it, we have to basically cut the floor out and then make a little cylinder and drop that down in it. Because we cut the floor out now, it's actually a, it's easy to do it now. It is the one one room in the boat that I thought, ah, oh, doesn't need any work. No, I no. Haven't even scheduled anything just to check. No, agreed. Yeah. But steel boat, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the issue with this is that there's some design choices that they made when they built it, which were fine for a 10 or a 15 year life. Mm -hmm. But now that we're 45 years old, um, it's not working. Have you told everyone about how you're redesigning it? So we're redesigning the anchor well. <laughs> we'll do it later, that's fine. Yeah. I'm just saying you should probably explain. Yeah, Go I think we're better off to just do it and get it done. Yeah, okay. So you haven't had a really a good chance to see whether you have to go into the tank, tank yet, eh? Uh, until we sandblast it I won't know for certain, but I, I think we can get away without it. Yeah, it looks like it, eh? Yeah. The plan that we have at this stage is we're going to go into town and grab um, a very small gun so we can get into the corner. Um, on the way back we'll grab sand so that we've got more blasting ability. The little sandblaster is working really well. It's a neat wee thing, it's a fast little thing to set up. Um, so then we'll blast out the bits that we've hammered um, and then pretty much then we're in a position to decide what we're going to fix as in, and how we're going to fix it. Because mm. our two options are cut it out and replace it or pad weld it. Mm. So it just depends on how thick it is. Mm. If, it's, if it's still got some thickness I'll pad weld it. We've got that thickness. Thick, yeah, the... Thick. Um, What's it called? Ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound. Yeah. We should definitely use the ultrasound. Yeah. So we know for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you're looking at the spread around the hole. Yeah. You want to know yeah. that everything is yeah. not going to go. So. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, um. I love that um bulkhead right in the middle. It's yeah. Lovely and strong. Yeah. 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 This areas um some of those. Up uh, up here, eh? Ribs are just like ooh, 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 yeah. it's right in front of the boat. I just think we should cut them out and strength. That's what I'm no, thinking. No, yeah. Like that's half a day. Some of that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long, it's a big job. Yeah, and it's a hot job. Yeah, mm. <laughs> you can hear about this. Oh, One of I'm the a... worst jobs on the boat, really. I'm <laughs> actually small space. I'm actually excited. Are you? Yeah. Why? Because I, I get the opportunity to do it properly. Uh -huh. It's the thing I most enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a crappy, crappy job, but at really? the end of it, you have a, a beautiful thing, and then you seal it and never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> So we managed to um, create a sauna. Uh, we've managed to basically cut into most of this rust. So pretty much we're down to steel now. So we're, we're, every time the chisel's hitting the steel, it's not creating dust and all that sort of jazz. It's, it's actually denting into hard steel now. So we know we're pretty much at the bottom. 
Um, there's no more flaking rust per se um, on any of the bits that we need to focus on. So we're going to get, get going to get in there with the sandblaster and clean it up and sort of see what we're working with in terms of white metal. And then we'll also do some measurements to sort of figure out how thick that um, uh, metal is. I'm pretty confident that it's actually thicker than I thought. I thought it was going to be worse than this. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. What um, we're doing right now though is Trev's outside the boat and he's drilling in where we, where we saw the original pinhole of rust coming out. Trev's drilling in through that so we can locate where that actual hole is. Hey, there we go. Yeah, got that. So that's our pinhole of rust. So we've got a pretty good idea now what sort of caused all of the rust. We've got the location of the leak sussed um, and now we're starting to formulate our plan as to how we're going to repair this. I wanted to show you some other bits that are going on in the background that you don't often get to see. Um, Tim and Colleen, they're some mates of ours down the coast. Tim's been putting together a, uh, all of the kitchen and cabinetry and so on that's going into the boat. So I really wanted to say thanks because he's a phenomenal craftsman and the work that he's doing is, is just amazing. The kitchen's going to look brilliant. But the coolest thing is he actually put together a video of him actually building it. So Colleen and Tim have been putting all of these clips together in the background and I just wanted to show you. Hi, I'm Tim. I've been putting together some plywood cabinets for Brew Pig's Kitchen in my garage about uh, 300 kilometres south of where Brew Pig's up on its hard stand. It's convenient to do it here because I've got a bit of space and shelter which is a bit scarce on Brew Pig. This stage I've cut and pre-assembled about three quarters of it. I'm not a carpenter and I don't have any special tools so it's all pretty basic but uh, Actually, I'm fairly pleased with the result. It's uh, pretty passable, I think. Uh, at this stage, I'd just like to say thanks to Rich for giving me a bit of a prompt early on to get started a few months ago. So, uh, thanks, Rich. First up, the design of the galley. I've used Google SketchUp to uh, produce this diagram. The galley sits just forward of the wheelhouse. The wheelhouse looks over the top of the galley, so there's a doorway coming through this side of the galley. There's also uh, two doors on this side into the forward bunk rooms. I'll just pan around so that you can see the general layout. Really at the moment it just lacks the uh, uh, cabinetry and storage space. So I'll just show you some pictures of the uh, cabinets. Here is the sink unit um, which houses uh, both a dishwasher and a clothes washer down the other end. Pictured here is the preparation bench with the uh, cooktop down at one end. We've tried to maximise usable storage space using drawers in preference to cupboards. The handles are wide open slots which cost nothing um, and they don't protrude to cause anyone any injury. Uh, this is the fridge unit uh, combined breakfast bar. The uh, odd looking shelves on the right hand side of the breakfast bar tended to be cup holders. Not sure how that's going to turn out. Okay, so on with the build. First up I gave all 16 sheets of ply a single coat of epoxy and with Colin's help I coated each sheet with epoxy, shifted it then to a temporary drying table for a few minutes while I coated the next sheet. Then I knocked off the bubbles which had formed with the roller before lifting it to a drying rack up against the wall. All of this had to be achieved in less than 45 minutes. With all of that over in two sessions, one for each side on two separate days, I began to cut the sheets out. Um, my tools are pretty basic, a circular saw and an aluminium straight edge, that's about it. Not a whole lot to be said about this. Along the way, I made a few jigs and a basic table saw, which is just an old circular saw mounted under a thick piece of ply. It was very handy in cutting many lengths of ply of equal width with longitudinal slots to make draw sides. I'm telling you, the sky is blue, the sun is high, I'm sitting here on my own. I also made a jig to lop those uh, drawer sides squarely into equal lengths so they could fit together nearly perfectly.
It may be a bit hard to see here, but what I'm doing is uh, using the table saw to make multiple passes of the drawer sides to make slots that would um, house the floor of the drawers securely. Another jig I made was uh, just basically a big rectangular hole in a piece of ply which I used to cut the rectangular handles out of uh, the drawer faces neatly. Uh, so once all of that was done and I'd assembled the drawers, it was on to the assembling the cabinets themselves. So here I'm putting the drawer slides in place. I'm telling you, the sky is blue, the sun is high. Gee, I'm fast. The uh, corresponding sliders on the sides of the drawers. Now let's uh, stick it together in a cabinet. Now, drill a few holes in the drawer fronts. Line up the drawer faces. Little spacer between the first drawer and the second drawer to line it up. Repeat the process with some spaces. Boy, he's good. And there we are. Okay, this is Bailey, my furry assistant and best friend. What do you think of all that stuff behind you, mate? Awesome, Dad. Anything else you'd like to say? Well, that's a bit awkward, but uh, the way it is, we'll just leave it there. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to find when you open your bloody hole up in your boat. That's right. <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates. Sometimes you start eating them, you realise you have to go and pull half the front end of your boat away. <laughs> yeah. So you throw the chocolates on the ground and storm out the room. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't quite got to storming you. That'll come later. <laughs> And then you're not going to throw the box of chocolates yeah. on the floor. And then, and then you storm back into the room because you still quite like the chocolates. So you, you pick the ones off the floor that aren't really ruined and you eat those. And then you storm back out and you leave the Turkish delight because nobody likes that. <laughs> you get that later. <laughs> to me that's all.